Listen, it's good to be coming your way today. We appreciate you watching. We always enjoy uh, coming to the studio and always have a good time. Appreciate you watching and give you an invitation to come be with us at Lacey's Chapel. Go to Henry Crossing and go 40 West like you're going to Scottsboro Church. It'll be about three miles on your left. You'll see a sign that says Lacey's Chapel and it'll take you straight to the church. So we'd love to have you. And God is just blessing her little church. He is really, really blessing it. So if you don't have a church and you're looking for a, a real friendly church, we'd love to have you. So give you that invitation. And like I say, it's a, it's a wonderful church. Good people. Some great people in this church. So we'd love to have you. Give you a chance. If you get a chance, you come be with us and uh, just a country church and everybody just uh, as friendly as they can be. So give you that invitation, Lacey's Chapel. But today we're going to be uh, speaking from the book of Jonah. We started last week and uh, about God told Jonah to go east, to go to Nineveh and preach. And Jonah went west, he went to Tarshish. And the Bible said to flee from the presence of the Lord. And today we're going to talk about verse 4. It says, The Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, means a storm. And the ship was like to be broken. In other words, the ship nearly broke in two. And the marina... The mariners were afraid and cried every man to his God and cast forth the wires that were in the ship into the sea. In other words, they're uh, lightening the load. Or they, they cast their cargo, in, that's what the notes in my Bible says, their cargo into the sea. Remember I told you, Jonah's disobedience, he ran from God. It cost him, it cost the people with him. So... These men are throwing their cargo overboard. But Jonah went down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. You know, he, he was so unconcerned. Everybody else is up there throwing stuff overboard and praying, and he's asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Rise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said, Every one to his fellow, come let us cast lots that we may know from whose cause this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lots fell upon Jonah. I just want to read this to you, then we'll, we'll get started. So they said, Tell us, we pray for him. what cause this evil has come upon us. They're asking Jonah, What's thy occupation, and whence comest thou? What is thy country, and of what people are thy? And he said, I am a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven. Jonah's telling him he fears God, but he's running from God, which has made the sea and the dry land. They were exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the man knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he told him. And they said unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea might become unto us? For the sea 
wrought and was tempted. In other words, it's a great storm. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be come for your sakes, for I know that for my sake the great temptest has come upon you. Verse 13. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempted against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, let, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us the innocent blood, O Lord, has done as it pleased thee. So they took Jonah and cast him into the sea, and the sea ceased to rage. So, that's a lot of verses to read, but the Bible said Jonah ran from the presence of the Lord. He ran from God. And I read, and the Bible said, the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea. In other words, there was a, a huge storm. We, we spoke all last week about Jonah's choices. He chose to run. He chose to disobey God. And he, he chose his path. I mean, you know, I said last week, God doesn't make anybody serve him. It's always going to be a choice. If we serve God or don't serve God, it'll always be a choice. So, what I'm going to talk about this week is this two verses. And one of them is... Uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. It says, Be not deceived. Well, in Revelations, God, God calls Satan a deceiver because he deceives us or he'll deceive a person into walking his own way or doing his own thing and not following God. That's the deception. Satan tells every person you can... Do your own thing and there won't be any consequences. But God's word says when we sin, when we willfully disobey God, there's consequences. There'll always be consequences. And here's what it says. Be not deceived. Don't let Satan deceive you. be another way to put that. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. See, the sin is always again God. When you disobey God or I disobey God, it's always again God. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. That's good or bad. That's good or bad. If you sow good, you're going to reap good. If you sow to the flesh or you sow bad, you do your own thing, you will not listen to God, well, that's what you're going to reap. But the crop is coming. It's a coming. We're, plant, we're, all, we're all planting crops. Every one of us is planting a crop. Either you're planting a crop of obedience, you're doing what the Word of God says to do, or you're planting a crop of disobedience. And if you plant a crop of disobedience, you're going to reap that crop of disobedience. The Bible said, don't let Satan deceive you. God is not mocked. You know, we're not going to make a fool out of God. We're not going to prove God wrong. We're not going to mock God. In other words, we're not going to lightly esteem God and get by with it. He said, God is not mocked. He said, for whatever a man soweth, that's good or bad. You can sow. There's a lot of people does a lot of great things for God. They, they're sowing good seed, and they're going to reap good seed. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Charles Stanley said this, we sow we reap what we sow. We uh, reap much later than we sow. You know, if you plant a, a crop of corn, you don't go out the next day and start pulling ears of corn. It takes time for that crop to manifest. It takes time for that, that crop to grow. Well, God calls disobedience or obedience like planting a crop. It's coming. It's coming. That crop is coming. If you sow to the flesh and you do your own thing, that you're sowing a crop. And if you sow uh, to the Spirit, you do the things that the Word of God says to do, 
you're planting a crop. So it's up to us what kind of crop we sow. But Jonah was planting a crop. I mean, he, he disobeyed God. He, he chose to disobey God. And God sent a storm. So Jonah ended up in the sea. And, but I want to look at verse 8. So he that soweth to the flesh of the flesh shall reap corruption. You know, the Bible says if you follow the flesh, you do the things of the flesh, it's going to bring corruption or decay. Doing your own thing in your life brings decay in your life to your marriage, to your church, to your health, whatever. The Bible said, he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption or decay, but he that soweth to the spirit of the spirit reap everlasting life. So God says... You know, you're going to reap what you sow. You can, you can live for God and uh, be blessed, have a good name, uh, buy fruit that's wonderful, and be an influence. I mean, you can plant a good crop, but it's up to you, the crop that you're going to plant. It's up to you. You have to decide, I'm going to do what the Word of God says to do. Verse 9 says, let us not be weary in well-doing. In other words, here's what God is saying. Don't get tired of doing the right thing. If you sow, like I said a while ago, if you plant corn, you don't go out the next day and get corn. God says don't be weary in well-doing. In other words, if you're living for God and you don't see the results the next day, they're coming. The results are coming. If you've got a good prior life and you're praying for your church or praying for your kids, you may not see the results the next day, but you will see them. That's why God says don't be weary in well-doing. He says, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not or if we don't quit. God says if you'll keep praying, you keep living for God, you keep going to church, he said you're going to reap. You're going to reap that good crop that you're sowing. I'm talking to a lot of people today that lives right. There's a lot of people today that's watching. You love God. You're sowing a good crop. You're faithful to God. You're living for God. And you got good things in your future. The one thing that God tells you, don't get disheartened. Don't quit. Stay faithful to God because your good crop is coming. He said, look at this. Let's not be weary in well-doing. In other words, don't get tired of serving God. Don't give up. If you don't see the results, do not give up. Do not give up. If you do not see the results, do not give up. Do not give up. You stay true to God. Your, your crop is coming. That's why God says don't be weary in well-doing. In, well in other words, don't get disheartened. Maybe you're praying for your children. God says don't quit. Don't get disheartened. Look what he says. For in due season, at the proper time, at the proper season. Man, this is one, this is good stuff right here. God is telling you that your prayers that you're praying and the service that you're doing in serving God, payday's coming. You may not have it right now, but it's coming. He says, let us not be weary or discouraged or disheartened in doing the right thing, in living for God. Don't be discouraged in living for God. He says, for in due season, at the proper time, we shall reap if we, do, if we don't quit, if we faint not, if we stay true to God. See, God is saying, his one warning to us, his one warning to us is don't quit. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Stay true to God. He says, you're going to reap. Man, this, this is wonderful stuff. Look at verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, as God has provided an open door for us or an opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. As we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially them that are of the household of faith. God says, as God has presented the opportunity for you to help someone to do good, God says do it, and especially them that are 
Christians would be another way to put it. But we see Jonah, he disobeys God. He disobeys God, and God sends a wind, and it causes a great storm. And men, they don't know God. They're praying to their God. And they're up there praying, throwing cargo overboard, and Jonah's down there asleep. He's unconcerned. But God gets his attention. God gets his attention. The, the storm did not cease. The storm, the storm did not cease till they threw Jonah overboard. Now, I want to I show you some. The rest of my time on God dealing with Jonah. Now, I'm, I want you to sit down and pour you some coffee and listen, because this is good. What I'm going to share with you is going to be good. Verse 5 said, You have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Now, God is talking here about when God has to correct us. He said, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, when nor faint means a word faint means don't you quit, don't you give up, when thou art rebuked of him. Now this next verse is a key verse. And maybe you're watching and maybe you've done something you should, and God is correcting you. But here's what it says. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastised. God says, those I love, he's talking about his children, those I love, I chastise. See, chastisement is two signs, really. Number one, it's a sign you're a child of God. And number two, God says, I, those I love, I chastise. God says, I correct those I love. If we understood that chastisement when, when we're doing something we shouldn't do and God corrects us, if we understood that it's because he loves us, God's correction is because he loves us. Let me, let me say this for it, to you. God has a plan for our life. God has a plan for our life. I'm, I'm going to read this to you. I, I've done read it, but if... I, Real quickly, I'm going to read it to you again. Here's what God says. Now listen to me. God has a plan for your life. And when we get outside of God's word, or we get outside of God's will, God has to get us back in line with his word. See, God's word says, God's word says, if God be for us, who can be against you? God said, I'm for you. God said, I'm for you. And God's word teaches us that his plans are best. I mean, your plans are not best, but God's plans are best for me and you. Here's what God says in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. See, God said, man, I think about you. There's a song that says, you know, he's always or you're always on my mind. That's an old country song. But God says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. God says he thinks about us. Now listen to what he says. Said the Lord, thoughts of peace. God said, I think good things about you. I have good plans for you. Man, this is wonderful. God said, I have some good plans for you. But for you to receive those good plans that God has for your life, you have to line your life up with the word of God. Why did God chastise Jonah? Because he would not line his life up with the word of God. He wanted to do his own thing. God said, go to Nineveh and preach. Well, Jonah, he's, God said, go east. Jonah went west. Jonah went to Tarshish. That was as, at that time, that was as farther west as as far as you could go. That's where he went. He went right opposite. See, but God's plan for Jonah was good. God had good things in store for Jonah. God had great things in store for those people where he's going to send him. 
God has good things in you. What God is doing, why God corrects us, is to get us in line with his word. Look what he says. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace. And not evil, God said, oh, man, I'm not thinking bad about you. I've got good plans. What God has said here, I have some great plans for your life. And for you to receive what I have for you, you have to be obedient to what I say. You have to be obedient to what I say. You think about, uh, or you go to church, and when you go to church, you think about this just for a minute. What's that preacher do? He's taking God's word and, he and helping you to understand God's plan for your life. That's what he's doing. He's taking the word of God and he's revealing what God has spoke that has been wrote down to you. He's showing you God's plan for your life. That's what a preacher does. Whether your life's and he's telling you God's plan for you is to be saved or whether you're saved and it's God's plan for you to grow or whether you have a lot of anxiety and it's God's plan for you to have peace. You know, you may be very unhappy and it's God's plan for you to have joy. It's God's plan for you to walk in love. Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. God's plan for you is good. This is what God told Jeremiah. I know the thoughts that I think toward you. And God said, I think about you. You're on my mind. Well, it says in Hebrews, we have an high priest that's seated at the right hand of the Father making intercessions for us. Jesus is at God's right hand praying for us, interceding on our behalf. This, this is such, if you, if you get this, if you get this, that God really, 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 really loves you, I mean, he loves you. And he's got some good plans for your life. And what he's doing is he's trying to get you to be obedient to what he tells you to do. God knows best. God knows best. Me and you do not know best. We don't. I'm going to turn to one more place real quickly. And... I guess everybody knows this, but I still want to turn to it and read it. Everybody knows it. I'm sure they do, but I want to read it. Here's what God says. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. God says, trust me. God says, I want you to trust me. I got some good plans for your life. I think good thoughts about you. God said, they're not evil. They're not bad. God said, I have good plans for your life. He says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. That verse says two things. Trust God and don't lean on your own knowledge. Do not depend upon your own knowledge. God said, you cannot do that. You have to depend upon what I tell you. Trust in the Lord in all thy ways. Lean not into thy own understanding. Do you know the word understanding there means to, to discern between what's right and wrong? God says, I want you to trust me. I don't want you to live life when you decide what's right and wrong. You go to the word of God. Let God show you what's good and let God show you what's bad. Now look at verse 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Here's what God says. And this, man, this, this is gold right here. God says, I want you to talk to me. I, we call it praying. I want you to talk to me about everything. I want you to tell me everything. You know, when God made Adam and Eve, and he put them in the garden, the Bible said he walked with them in the cool of the day, talking to them. It's wonderful. God wants to fellowship with you. God made you to fellowship with him. 
in all thy ways acknowledge him. God said, I want you to tell me everything. I want to be your best friend. I want to be your guide. I want to be your companion. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Now listen to what he says. It's good. And he shall, he shall, didn't say mine. He shall direct thy path. God said, I'll show you, I'll show you where to walk. God said, if you'll pray to me, this is, man, this is it's for somebody. God said, if you'll come to me and you'll talk to me and you'll pray to me, God said, I'll show you what to do. I'll guide your steps. God said, I will guide you. He says this, be not wise in your own eyes. First step is recognizing that God has the answers. Me and you don't. God says, I don't want you to be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. Now let's get back to this and we'll go. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, thoughts of peace, not evil, to give you an expected end. The word expected end means hope in the future. God, listen to what God says. I want to give you hope. And the word hope means to believe something is good, something is good in your future. Something good is about to happen. That's what the definition of the word hope. I want to give you hope. I want you to know. Here's what God says. I want you to know there's good things in your future. I want you to know I've got good things for you. A hope and a future. God says, I want to give you a hope in the future. Here's, listen. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will listen unto you. I will hearken unto you. God says, I'll pay attention when you pray to me. God says, when you pray, I'll hearken to you. I'll listen to you. Here's the last verse, and it's the best. I say the best for last. Just listen to what God says. And you shall seek me and find me. You shall seek me, and God said, you're going to find me when you search for me with all your heart. God says, when you put me first in your life, you're going to find me. When you put me first, when you spend time with me, when you put me first in your life, you're going to find me. The Bible says, drawn out of God. And he'll draw nigh to you. God said, you make that step toward me. And God said, I'll make the next step. Maybe you're watching, you've never been saved, you're lost. And you want to, you want to receive God? Just repeat after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I confess I'm a sinner. And I put my trust in you. Say, Jesus... Come into my heart, and I put my faith in you. And if you prayed it and you believed it, he's come in. To this time next week, may God bless you. Have a blessed weekend. Get a chance to come be with us at Lacey's Chapel. We'd love to have you. And goodbye. Sure the voice of God.